And to play this game, China uses many tools, diplomatic, military, economic. We've discussed them in detail on the show. Tonight, let's talk about another tool, propaganda, the control over narrative. The rise of China has been guided by a narrative of grievance, grievance towards the world for what it calls a century of humiliation by external forces. Well, now China wants to set the narrative by good press, both at home and abroad. Yesterday, we showed you how China's propaganda machine works domestically. Tonight, we'll take you inside China's global propaganda campaign, how it suppresses the truth and spreads lies across the world. China's media interference is now global, just like its virus spread all over the globe. Beijing is training foreign journalists. It is ramping up international broadcasting. It is undertaking extensive advertising campaigns, even buying media outlets. China has infiltrated the global media to silence critics. It is investing billions to increase its global media influence. According to one report, the Chinese regime invests as much as $1.3 billion, $1.3 billion every year to increase its reach of the state media. A good amount of this money is spent on promoting state media and foreign news outlets. The U.S. Justice Department has released some figures. According to their report, China Daily, which is a mouthpiece of the Chinese regime, has paid American newspapers $19 million for advertising and printing in the last four years alone. One nine, 19 million. I want to mention a few names of its high-profile customers. The Wall Street Journal one of the largest newspapers in the U.S. by circulation. The Wall Street Journal sends 2.8 million copies annually, digital and print combined. Do you know how much it earned through Chinese advertisements? Six million dollars since December 2016. It has international editions in Mandarin. The Washington Post, a newspaper that has won 69 Pulitzer Prizes, 18 Neiman Fellowships, 368 awards from the White House. Do you know how much this daily newspaper has earned carrying Chinese ads? $4.6 million. The list keeps getting more illustrious. The New York Times is on this list. 130 Pulitzer Prizes, the world's 18th most circulated newspaper. It has earned $50,000 in paid news between 2016 and 2020, and the list does not end there. The Los Angeles Times, the Seattle Times, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, the Chicago Tribune, the Houston Chronicle, the Boston Globe, all these major news outlets in the United States of America have been listed as clients of China Daily. And I'm not saying this, China Daily is. It has mentioned these names in a list of detailed breakdown of payments to American news outlets. So what's the big deal, you may ask? These are just ads. Yes, they are. But with a pro-Beijing spin on contemporary news events. Some of these newspapers have published paid supplements produced by China Daily. They're designed to look like news articles, classic paid news. China is spinning the narrative to suit its interests. Let me give you an example. For six months, we on Gravitas have uncovered all aspects of the pandemic and China's culpability from Hong Kong to Xinjiang. We've reported on how China is suppressing dissent. We have campaigned for Taiwan's right to democracy. Now, a few days back, state-run Xinhua carried a news clip from this show. It included one of our segments on American hypocrisy. Why did Xinhua pick up just this? To justify China's own propaganda against the U.S. government. Take a look at what they chose. Teaches equality to the world, but practices racism and discrimination at home. It's good that they're watching. They should also take a close look at our reports on racism and police brutality in China. We've done a lot of those too. The China of Xi Jinping is taking a leaf out of Mao's book. Mao Zedong gave a slogan Making the foreign serve China. This was his desire for modern-day China. And today, the Communist Party has both the money and the reach to make some in the foreign press serve its interests.